This is the Russian dynamite Masha Slamovich. Becca here. This is not America's sweetheart Davian. It's Billy Starks and the super fly guy Trayvon Jordan. This is the fly side fly Jalen Brandon. Hardcore princess Jules Malone. Hi there, this is the bubblegum princess Alexia Nicole. This is the Brazilian Wonder Woman Christy Jane. This is the baddest black belt Chennai Kai. This is Kid Bandit. The smash hit Joel Bateman. This is Robin Renegade. Cody Hawk. Brutal Bob Evans. And you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey, this is Quadzilla T. Gaines, the owner of the finest quads in women's wrestling, and you're listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show with Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today, the trusted choice for interviewing all your favorite wrestlers, Every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox, sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. I'm, of course, your host, James J. And it's a great day for wrestling, because we are wrestling with... Quadzilla T. Games! <laughs> hey, I am super excited to be here I'm the owner of the finest quads in women's wrestling. Like you just said, Quadzilla T Games. Absolutely. And uh, where can we see Quadzilla next event-wise? Um, yeah, I got a lot of shows packed up. I have been super busy. I think through March through June, I think I got every weekend booked. And I go all over the place. I do a lot of shows in the Panhandle that's in Florida. I've started reaching out to different states like Louisiana and Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi. So shows I have coming up, like in May, I have The Guardian's Legacy in Panama and Florida. That's on May 4th. May 11th, I'm in Florida in McClinney, and that's for Riot Pro Wrestling. Actually, correct, that is Daytona. And then after that, I'm making a really big, exciting return to Georgia for SWT. I I started out there early in my career, and I haven't been back there in a while, so I'm so excited to return to my fans there. And I'm going to wrap up the month of May for SWT, which is also located in Florida, and that will be in Ocala. And, of course, if you want to stay up to date with all the shows moving forward from that, I'm on all social media platforms. Instagram, it's at T underscore Gaines. Facebook, you can look me up as T Gaines. And I have a YouTube channel where you can watch my highlight reels, promos, and just all things T Gaines. And merchandise? Oh, yes. I... I have a great bit of merchandise, and I've been very proud of it because I've been wanting to come up with all things tea games, T-shirts, cups, keychains, wristbands. I'm going to start producing some beanies, and all of those things you can see on my social media, which ones I have available. I have stuff on hand. If I don't, I can always order something. But you can go online and see the merchandise I have, and of course, at a show, you see me come up to the merch table. I have pictures, so much stuff, something for everybody. Okay, so the best way to get merchandise is uh, directly through you um, by DMing you, correct? Correct. I don't have any other, like, websites or anything up. So the best way online, you can just message me directly, really on any platform you choose. I have email, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. If you want to make an order, you can make that directly through me. Cool. And uh, you don't have to go looking for any of her social media. All of the links to all her social media will be in the description of the video below, but on YouTube and CastBox. All right, uh, let's get into it. Uh, you work for Guardians Legacy Wrestling. Can you tell us about your relationship with the company? Oh, yeah, the Guardians Legacy has been a phenomenal promotion. They are just a little bit shy of one year, and they have already made such a humongous impact in Panama City, Florida. They offer amazing entertainment that is kid-friendly. It's faith-based. 
and the production is absolutely amazing. They go above and beyond for the, not only the fans, but for all the wrestlers participating also. They truly strive to bring wrestling fans the utmost, best, and exciting entertainment that they can see. Right. Now, um, we can't necessarily talk about T Games without mentioning Emily Locke. Um, sometimes <laughs> enemy, um, sometimes kind of sort of friend. Can you tell us about your relationship with Emily? Oh, yeah. My relationship with Emily has been running on for quite some time, probably a little over two years now. We crossed each other's paths and started off as friends, good, wholesome competition. And I would say on the indie scene for women's wrestling, we have one of the biggest rivalries that's out there because it has stretched through different states, different promotions. And it's funny about the Guardians' legacy because we found ourselves being tag team champions. And how even that spread out was pretty chaotic, starting off with her trying to go after the tag championships, but not even having a partner. She had multiple people lined up. They all called out. So we found ourselves in the position where she needed somebody. So we had to set our differences aside as much as we could, and we became successful in obtaining the Guardians' legacy tag team championships, but it's been nothing short of difficult trying to stay <laughs> on the same page with someone that you've been rivaling with. It's, it definitely has gift difficulties, but we got a, it's a funny kind of friendship and a on. Because, uh, you know, it is, you know, interesting that you would, you know, come to her aid to get the tag team titles with her considering that she did beat you like a month prior to that for the singles women's championship, no? Yes, she does. Right now she does hold the women's championship and the tag team championship. So it's been kind of almost like tiptoeing around each other, acknowledging that when we do go and defend the tag champs, we have to be on some sort of page, have some sort of strategy for it. But I know in my heart my goal is to get the Women's Championship back, and I'm sure that in the back of her mind she knows that also. So it's kind of keep your uh, your friends close type of situation, right? Exactly. When I posted the first thing online letting everybody know that we were the tag champions, that's the exact caption. As I was sitting there, I was like, what should, what should I say about this photo? And the exact thing was to keep your friends close but your enemies closer. That being said, how soft was Emily's jacket? What about Emily's jacket? How soft was Emily's jacket? <laughs> Listen, it had me distracted for a second because I'm like lots of other girls. It was nice and it was fluffy and I got distracted for a second. And you see how much, you see the budding of heads and how <laughs> it's hard to keep one focus on the belt. And we haven't defended them yet. And I believe it's a big thing of us trying to even get on the same page so that we can defend these belts. And it's been a struggle. All right. Now, um, one thing I found super interesting was um, that you actually got to work with Brody Lee, uh, Luke Harper. Um, can you tell us mm -hmm. about that experience um, working with um, Brody Lee? Oh, it was absolutely amazing. That's a really cool thing about the Flatbacks Wrestling School is that you never know who's going to drop in. And I got to work with some amazing people, and he was so kind, and he was so ready to lend all the tools and the knowledge that he had. And we got to work together. I remember we were going to be working a practice match together. He asked me if I could, if I could do a missile drop kick. And I was like, no, I haven't learned it, that, learned it yet. And he said, okay, scratch that. We'll go over such and such. And then after that practice was over, I was like, hey, can you teach me how to do this? And he's like, oh, yeah. And I did it. And there's a video where I was intimidated because the quads don't typically leave the ground, but I was so <laughs> eager. I wanted to learn any and everything. So I was like, I want to give it a shot. And I was so terrified. And then after I did it, you see his throw his arms up in the air, like, what were you scared for? 
but he was, it was amazing working with him and him and other wrestlers that have so much knowledge. They've been doing this. This is their life. And they are just so helpful and so ready to give those knowledge and tools to the next generation of wrestlers. Now, you mentioned, you know, the quads don't fry, but they do squash watermelons, no? Yes, they do squash watermelons, and it's so funny. I was just talking with a friend of mine today about that because it's been a couple years since that video, what that promo was posted, and I've gotten so many comments like, when are you going to do it again? You need to do another one. And I was like, well, summer's coming up. So I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to be squashing some watermelons this summer. (laughs) Hell yeah. I'm surprised, like, a new signature move didn't come out of th- that um, video where you just put your uh, your opponent's head between your legs and, you know, squeeze it like a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> I did try to integrate different ways in the ring. I started doing a submission kind of like that when I have them down on their stomach and I started w- wrapping the, the quads around them and let them flop around like a fish. <laughs> no, um, you worked for Shine Wrestling, um, you know, one of the bigger yes. women's promotions, uh, I believe against Olivia Rose. Can you tell us about um, what it kind of means to you to work for Shine in that experience? Oh, yeah, working for Shine is amazing. It's a place that I had heard of. They have a great big following and a lot of attraction, and having an all-woman promotion is is very difficult, for one. I mean, typically, indie wrestling shows out of six or eight matches is only one women's match. There's a, a big pool of the men and the women, or a big pool of men in indie wrestling and getting a locker room full of them, but it's kind of harder to get a whole locker room full of women. So Shine is doing something that's so amazing, and it's hard to find, especially in Florida. I know there may be other promotions out there that's an all-woman promotion in Florida. I hadn't noticed them yet. Shine has a really big and a great representation of how they showcase this woman talent, and you show up, and I felt so taken care of by everyone in charge. It's a great group of people around, and it's awesome to meet lots of other women that I hadn't met before or seen before and getting those connections and seeing the other woman that's doing this also and it's just it's a great platform for the woman wrestlers to be on so I was so happy that I got in there and I've been there twice now and I'm super excited for what the future holds there getting to work with a lot of other women that I hadn't gotten to meet or see at any other promotion. Now um, competing for like Shine is that kind of a moment you take in in the moment or is that kind of something that sets in afterwards like wow i did this it's like is there's definitely that i guess like intimidation in a sense but not so much because i'm confident in my skill sets and my training but it's stepping into like a a whole nother like realm in the sense because like i said it goes from the women's match being one match on the card to multiple women on one card. And we're all in the same category. It's not like a normal indie show where the people kind of separate the men men's match and the women's match. Like we're all on this same playing field and we're all bringing something different to the table to uplift this promotion. So there's a lot of faces, a lot of different gimmicks, and it's definitely stepping into it. I was like – whoa, okay, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring my very best like I do to every promotion, and I'm going to crank it up a notch because I know this playing field is filled with a bunch. We're all the same players. We're all women here. So my goal is to bring the utmost, very best that I can, get the Quazilla name out there so that when people walk away, they remember, they remember who I am, even not getting overshadowed or by all the other women's matches like I said, because every match is a women's match, and all of us, we're trying, you know, we're competing, we're putting off the best product that we can. So I definitely have walked away very happy. Um, I'm happy with the impression that I made coming into Shine, stepping in there as 
the Quadzilla T Games and expanding the Quad Squad, getting my name out there, establishing myself. And so I'm so excited to see that grow further as I work more for Shine into the future. Now, um, another uh, a big name that you've been in the ring with is a one Masha Slamovich. Can you tell us about that experience? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I first, the matches I have with Masha, that was very early on in my wrestling career. And I was in Miami, Florida, and that was, it was amazing. I know that she has built such an empire for herself, and she's out there and she's killing it. You say her name and people know who you're talking about. She's ruthless. She has all this aggression. And getting to work with that, that, and especially stepping out of wrestling and being new and still trying to find myself, I was able to take a lot from her, seeing how she worked, how she carried herself, and what it is she was bringing to the ring. And stepping in the ring with her, I left better. I left tougher and stronger. So she's, she's definitely an amazing woman talent. You said that was early on in your career, so um, I'm assuming you would like to get back in the ring with Masha now and kind of show show her, you know, how you've progressed, no? Oh, yeah, I definitely would because I know that my character has very much evolved, especially in these last uh, year and a half, two years, because I've been in the wrestling business for four years now, and so it would be really cool because... Then, like, I was just, like, stepping into who I am. I was just starting. And having knowing that I've evolved in myself, I would love to step in the ring again because for her, it would be like meeting a whole new person, and that's a great thing. And I'm sure, like, in her time, she's even evolved herself. So it would be great for us to clash again, us both being more even evolved than what we were even yesterday. So I think that would be an amazing experience. Now, uh, I was interested, you know, early on in your career, you were uh, the Trumps. Um, but I, I noticed that you uh, more recently switched to cargo pants. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I know that with the camo pants stepped in, I was wanting to adopt kind of more of a Lita vibe. I really look up to Lita and her work and what she, the impact that she's made in women's wrestling. The camo from day one has always been something with me. It derived from my upbringing, being in the country, being very based in a, on, I live on a farm and, you know, we hunt fish. So camo is very like a dominant wardrobe where I'm from. And so I was like, you know what? I want to, I want to carry this into my wrestling career who I already am. And so my first gear set was a rose gold camo. And then after that came a traditional camo. And I've gotten a, like two or three sets that's not exactly camo, but I, that's where I started from. And that's, it's just, it's just been my thing. I love the camo look and people know me for that. And then as I was trying to experiment with different looks, because I always like to keep being fresh, keep giving the fans like something new with me, even if it's how, I do my makeup, how I do my hair, and I love switching up, like, the outfits that I wear to get the fans a little something new, and I love Lita, so I got the camo pants, and I got a shirt that says got quads, question mark, and camo, and I love the look, and I got a lot of compliments from it, and the people really liked it, and so I, I think it's great, and I love how the fans connect me with it. Like, they see me, they're like, camo, that's tea games. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> now, um, another uh, big name that you've been in the ring with is uh, Rika Tahaka. Um, can you tell mm-hmm. us about that experience? Oh yeah, me and her, we worked only one time, and it it was great. Like I said, it's another name I hadn't worked the same promotion from her since, but there's different promotions that I'm reaching out to to start working for, and I know that she's a part of those. So I really do hope that we can cross paths again because 
with wrestling matches, I always want to leave the fans wanting more. Like, they enjoy the match, but I always want to leave them wanting and grasping for more. In that match, I definitely feel like afterwards, there's definitely some more work that can be done between us. So I really do hope our paths cross again. Now, um, I believe this was on uh, Instagram. Um, Alexa Bliss actually put you over on her Instagram um, feed. No? Uh, yeah, I know with Flatbacks, they had been posting stuff. I, I was there for my classes, and it got some attention from Alexa. I got attention from Natalia and Bailey, and they were making their comments and such. And I remember reading them, and my jaw dropped. I was like, oh, my goodness, to, like, these amazing women and to know that they're like watching my stuff and they're giving me these compliments that made me feel absolutely amazing and helped me give me that confidence whenever I needed the boost of I I can do this and I can do this well. And so it was such such an amazing feeling when I read those things that they had written out. It was it was so heartfelt and I think about it to this day all the time. All right. Now um you also wrestled Charlie Cruel. Can you tell us about um, that match? Did you say that name one more time? It broke up just a little oh, bit. Uh, Charlie Cruel. Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Sorry, I was just blooping out a little bit. Um, can you tell? Can you say the promotion? Um, I don't necessarily know the promotion. I could look it up, but uh, you wrestled Charlie Cruel? Maybe uh, Charlie oh, cool. Pierce, her name is now? You're not registering that for some reason. You could, uh... Or Charlie? Maybe I'm not, maybe I'm just not picking it up right, but you said Charlie? Yeah, Charlie Cruel. I think she's Charlie Pierce now, I want to say. Are you, are you talking about Persia Pierce? No. We could, uh, we could come back to it. Um, okay, I'm just not representing her Charlie, but again, it, it may just be just not picking yeah, it no up no over worries. audio. Yeah, no worries. Um, you wrestled um, Chelsea Dorden, correct? Yes. Chelsea, obviously, a well-respected name in that area, um, you know, in, in the wrestling as well. Uh, can you tell us about wrestling Chelsea? Yes, I remember I crossed paths with Chelsea in Georgia at SWA, where I was the women's champion, and I got to work with her a couple of times, and I was very excited for it. I know that the fans were excited to see it. I mean, it's a girl that there's definitely a size difference, and there's a lot of times where I step in the ring with the girls, and normally it's it's me that's bigger or taller, and then stepping in the ring with her is like, whoa. And she is a force to be reckoned with. She is so knowledgeable, so talented. And that's another match that I could say I walked away from, and I felt, I felt a lot tougher, but maybe that was because of the beatings. But... <laughs> I, it, it was great. I know that, you know, she's very much at integrated into Shine Wrestling, and I'm excited. I'm hopefully even there we could start running something. She's another woman's talent that is very respectable, a very down-to-earth human being, and she loves wrestling, and you know it, and so I would love to work with her again, most definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, now it's time for our next segment, and that's uh, Chi Gaines Bizarre Adventure. You're a pro wrestler that goes <laughs> up and down the roads, and weird, crazy, and bizarre things are bound to happen. Can you tell us a road story that fits that description? I'll definitely say, being in wrestling, I used to drive a 2000 Lincoln town car and it used to be my grandmother's, and it got, 
it said it got like 15 miles to the gallon. It really felt like probably 12 or 10. And of course, with wrestling, travel is the biggest thing, making sure you have something reliable that you're going to get to point A and point B. And the furthest I took that car was to Miami, a good six hour drive. And I remember being on the interstate and I'd be pushing it and I'm just thinking to myself, Granny, I know that you're with me and you're going to get me to this show safely. But there's times when I was like, oh man, and something was off in that car with the miles till empty and I was driving down the road and it just started counting down like a timer from like 50, 49, 48, 47. I'm like, what? I was like, no way. I started doing the math, calculating exactly how many miles of gas is in the car, how many it takes to get there, to get back, and it was off by like 20 to 30 miles. And I was like, oh, man, but it's what I had to work with. It was a 2000s car, so there's no Bluetooth. I had a big speaker I had to make sure was charged if I wanted to listen to something riding in the back seat with me. And I took that thing with me to so many shows. And I just remember, I always got everywhere safely. But as always, when I sat there and I watched the miles count down, I was like, okay. I was like, Lincoln, you got, I got to get there. I so I can worry about how I'm going to get home, but I got to get there. I got to get there and wrestle. And it always got me there. And I kept working. And God blessed me with the opportunity to get a newer vehicle in time as I did, I was like, all right, it's time to start expanding because, like I said, the Lincoln had gone to where I needed to go then, but there were some promotions that I, I couldn't work for, I couldn't accept because I knew my vehicle may not have been that reliable and I wasn't going to put the promotion in the spot to, like, wonder, oh, is, is t going to be able to make it or not? So I would be smart with my bookings and knowing not to push it. And time as I got this vehicle is when I started full-on all over the road, wanting to go to more states and being able to actually make it. But that's a definitely crazy road story when you see your miles start ticking like a timer and you're praying that you're going to make it to the wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, um, can you tell us, is there any significant meaning of your yellow rose tattoo on your arm? Oh, yeah, there there definitely is, and I'm going to try not to get emotional, but I can't make any promise, but that one is really special because my best friend named Abby, we met in second grade, and we have been best friends ever since, and one night, like, we had been talking about tattoos, and she was like, I don't really know what I want. Like, we didn't even know what we wanted, but we knew we wanted to get tattoos. And we're, like, teenagers. Well, I should say teenagers. We're 18, but you know. So I was like, you know what, let's just go. And we'll figure it out along the way. We're going to get some tattoos tonight. And she's looking on her phone, and she finds these roses. And the rose initially was going to be, like, not even longer than your pointer finger. Like, it wasn't going to be that big. And I was like, all right, we'll do that. And we get there, and they're like, yeah, to get the details you want, it's going to have to be a little bit bigger. And then you see, if you look it up, how big it is, it covers, like, my whole, almost whole length of my forearm. And she got a red one. I got a yellow one. They're exactly the same, just minus the exact color of the rose. And she tragically passed away in, in September of this past year. And I'm sorry, I looked at the tattoo all the time and it's great to have that of course didn't imagine that this is how life would go but i have this permanent marker literally on my arm that i get to see and look at every day and think of her but that's it's a probably one like my most favorite out of all the tattoos that i have what are some of your other tattoos yeah, I got a couple other ones um, on my same forearm. The very first one I got is an anchor, and it has a breast cancer ribbon that's woven through it, and it says Love Mom on the side of it, and the Love Mom is my actual mom's handwriting. She's a breast cancer survivor, and she loves anchors. She's always tied her faith to that symbolism, so that's why I got the anchor 
And then above that, I have a barbell that says fear is a liar written um, underneath it. And I got that when I was doing my weightlifting competitions. And one of my favorite songs to listen to was fear is a liar. And I felt like in my past, the reasons why I wouldn't be outgoing or any of those things was because I had a lot of fear of failure, disappointment, all that stuff. And I got to the point where I was like, I can't let fear run my life where I'm going to let all these opportunities pass me by. So that's where that came from. And then I have my childhood pet paw print um, tattooed on me. Um, I had her when I was like one and a half and she passed away just a few years ago and I got her paw print. And then on my side, I have an azalea and I got that after my grandmother passed. She always had pretty azaleas in her yard so I got that one on my side, and right now I haven't I haven't gotten any more. I definitely want to. I know that most of my tattoos is all kind of located on one arm, my forearm, and it stretches a little bit up or higher, but I'm definitely wanting to eventually get some kind of sleeve done of some sort. But like I've explained, like all my tattoos have really big symbolic meanings. Right. And so I've just been – really meticulous on like what it is that I like want to get done. So, but in the future, I definitely want to eventually have this whole thing slaved out and have it be like a, a tell all of like my life. So, uh, nothing aren't out, but you definitely have plans for, uh, some new ink. Oh yeah, I definitely do have plans. I know I have a, Lots of stuff go through my mind. I know I live on a farm, and so I would love to get, like, some kind of, like, nature theme of some sort. I have younger cousins that I love with all of my heart, and I thought of having them create some kind of artwork and integrate that. So I know whatever it's going to be that I'm going to, you know, put on my body, I want it to have a really big symbolic meaning, which it is permanent, and... I don't knock people for getting random tattoos because they look good. I'm no hater on tattoos. I've had people hate on mine and think that, oh, you shouldn't get tattoos or why'd you get this or that. And it's it's my choice and it's my personal decision and it's it's the stories of my life. So I'm never going to knock anyone for whatever spontaneous tattoo because honestly, there's a lot of them out there and they're pretty funny. And I'm like, I'm not bad to knock no one else for their tattoos. <laughs> and people can knock mine but I've I love tattoos I love ink I think there's nothing wrong with it I think that is great and an awesome expression for something that you love so much that you want to put permanently on your body um so there's definitely plans in the future for key games to hopefully be sleeved out (laughs) well you actually you uh draw and paint no I do I have it in a a good bit because I've gotten so busy with life and work and the wrestling and everything, but I do really enjoy um, drawing and painting and creating things. Now, when you are, what are you kind of um, drawing? What are you painting? So I really do like working with pastels. Um, oil painting. I love doing nature scenes and painting trees and such. And I know in high school, like I was in art class and I absolutely loved it. I loved making things out of clay, the pottery. I just, I love being able to take whatever's like in my, in my head and be able to put it to paper and be able to make something amazing and gift it to people, hang it on my own wall. I just think it's kind of like wrestling. Like when I'm in the ring and people see me working, they can see and they can tell I love what I'm doing. And I love how with painting and artwork, people take their ideas and their passions and they're laying it out there in these expressions of of paintings and drawings and you can see their their passion and emotion. Now, um, you are... Uh, state a cha- a state champion weightlifter, no? Yes. 
can you tell us about what it kind of means to you to become state champion? Um, yeah, I became a state champion when I was in high school competing for weightlifting. And in my junior year, I competed. And with weightlifting, it is an individual sport, but it's also like a team sport because you're put in weight classes. And, of course, the goal is to lift the most weight in your weight class. But also, once you place like first, second, third, your placement individually helps scores you points that's calculated in the end as a team, what like everyone scores. In junior year, my like, I call it my rookie year because it's the year that I actually got serious about weightlifting and I wanted to do it competitively. And I went to state and it was held in Panama City, Florida, and I placed seventh. And I was so grateful to my coach for getting me to the point of being able to lift that state and get in my body and my mind and literally coaching me through everything. And I told him I was grateful, but I wasn't going to know what it feels like to be seventh place again. And another thing with that is that year I didn't place first, but my team won as a state. So it's like everybody, the whole team won, so everybody got, you know, the state ring. And placing in seventh, at that point, like, it cuts off. I'm not sure if the cutoff is third or fifth, where, like, your placement doesn't earn any points for your team. So physically on the outside, I was so overjoyed and happy with my team and what we accomplished that year. But inside my head, I was kind of beating myself down because I was like, I – I didn't score any points to even contribute to this win. So I was like, I don't feel like I even like deserve like the state ring at all. And I was battling a lot of things mentally with that. And I remember the day that we got them and I put them on and the whole team was excited and I expressed to them the things that had been feeling and they were right there beside me to be like, no, like you are a part of this team. We're a family. We do this together. And that year, I kind of became the team Chapman. I was leading devotionals, the prayers for everything. When we left to go to a meet, when we came back before the meet, I was in charge of praying over everyone. And so they were like, Taylor, like, you help lead us here. Like, you are an integrate part of this team. Don't let, like, these thoughts bring you down. And I remember time as I got home from state, I texted my coach, and I was like, training, it starts tomorrow. I'm ready. I want to become a state champion. And so that led into my senior year. And if I could go back and relive any point in my life, it would be my senior year. That was the best time. The only worry I had in the world was getting my butt into the gym. Like I spent hours, at least five hours a day in the gym It didn't matter what holiday it was. Our coach, we had training seven days a week. It didn't matter if it was Christmas, Thanksgiving. We got up, we worked out, then we went open present. So we got up, worked out, then we'd eat with the family. On Sundays, we'd get up, go to church, and then go to the gym. There was no days off, and I kicked it in high gear. And my senior year, I became a state champion, and... Gosh, just that entire year, like when I close my eyes and I play it like a movie, I'm like, man, that's just such a such a highlight of my life. And that was the first athletic journey and like victory that I had. Like the first goal that I really set out for myself and achieved was becoming a state champion. And like I said, that's where my barbell tattoo delivers from because I got that tattoo like a few weeks before I think districts because it goes districts regionals and then state and man weightlifting is always going to have my heart because it's like the start of where my athletic journey began was I was 13 I was in the weight room and like that's where it all started now, after you um, you finished, uh, once you got a state championship, you kind of um, finished up with that and started pro wrestling. But uh, was it kind of, um, 
you fit you you got to your goal with weightlifting, so it was on to the next thing. Like what made you decide, you know, weightlifting I'm I'm done with that. Um, when it comes to competition anyway. Yeah, I I know in high school after state was over with, there was still like a few months left, like before graduation and there were some different competitions that would pop up here and there that my coach would offer to take us to. And there was one competition. It was like the high school throwdown or something. And any high school student in Florida had to submit a video of like the highest clean, the highest squat and deadlift, I think. And I won that and I got the opportunity to fly to Chicago and train with the USA Olympic team. And that was an amazing experience in itself. I hadn't like set out, like my dream wasn't, you know, I'm gonna be an Olympic lifter. It was, you know, this opportunity fell in my lap and I'm so happy that I went because I gained so much athletic knowledge from these people. And then I came back and then there was a couple powerlifting meets that was in the Orlando area. And my coach was like, you guys want to go do this? And so we're like, yeah. And so I started training and specifically in powerlifting. And I did one meet and my numbers were high enough that I automatically qualified to go to nationals. And so I was like, okay, sweet. I'm going to go to nationals now. So it's kind of like a different things were kind of falling into my lap and I was doing them and I was enjoying them and it was great experiences. And then it was hitting me, you know, my dream since I was 12 was to be a wrestler. Like my dream wasn't to be in like an Olympian weightlifter. It wasn't to be like a power lifter. These things kind of fell in my lap and I was, you know, doing them. And my, the plane tickets, everything was booked for me to go to nationals for power lifting and, I just felt myself going through like a rut and in the gym, like a mental blocker. And I, I wasn't enjoying the workouts as much. And I, I was moody and I was like confused and such. And I was like, I I know that this isn't what like I wanted to be, but it's like something I started. I got to finish it and then I'll see what happens next. And it wasn't until my family was watching a movie and it was fighting with my family, the movie based on, Paige, now Soraya and AW, and I always looked up to her, and we watched that movie, and at the end of it, I just, I walked away from my family, and I just, I sat and I cried, and I'll, and I'll say it with no, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word right now, like, I know this is going to sound cheesy, but I say, okay, I say it with no embarrassment at all. I grabbed my toy WWE belt that I had since I was a kid, and I sat and I cried holding it because I was like, it was hitting me then. Like, I need to start. I need to start chasing this like now. I want to start this now. And I told my dad, I was like, hey, I don't want to go to the powerlifting nationals. I want to go to wrestling school. And my dad has been my number one supporter since day one. He didn't say nothing like you have to do this or the, the plane ticket is always bought. We can't get no refund. It was none of that. It was, all right, let's look at wrestling schools. And then I found Flatbacks. The trainers are two people that I looked up to, uh, Sean Spears and Tyler Breeze. And then suddenly it went from me having this really big mental blocker to everything falling into perfect place to get me to be able to go to this wrestling school. And so that's really, like, how it went. Out of high school, there was those different things with the Olympic and the powerlifting that fell in my lap. And then I came to that realization, like, wrestling was my dream, and it's time to start it now. Hell, yeah. Now, we we obviously just talked about being a state champion with Lifter. And, you know, obviously all of uh, your current tag team champions with um, Emily Locke, um, singles women's champion, uh, you know, a lot of accolades. Um, can you tell us about being the Miss Sweetheart Green Doll Queen? Yeah, it's something that a lot of people um, really, like, noted or, like, like realize. 
I mean, I made one, like, post about it, and it's funny, like, my younger cousin, she was very much into pageants. She was doing them all the time, and I had never thought twice, like, I, I never was a pageant girl, never wanted to be a pageant girl. I really didn't care about it, and she was like, hey, will you, will you do one with me? And I was like, yeah, like, I will, and so we went dress shopping together. We did the whole stuff, and it was a great bonding thing for us both, and I did one, and it was fun. We had a great time. And then another one came up, and she's like, you want to do this with me again? And I was like, yeah. So the stem of it was more of a bonding thing for me and her. And then that second one we did, I won I won the whole thing in my category. And it was just such a sweet moment. And I made my post talking about, you know, I took a day out of the wrestling world to step into the pageant world. And it was so, it was a lot of fun that day being around her and having those memories and her wanting to share with me what her passion is. It was, it was really sweet. All right. Well, can you tell us about your love of brats? My love of what? Brats. Brats. Oh my goodness. That started, see, I was, I was never really like a Barbie girl like Barbie and the Princess Popper the movie I love it and I will watch it later tonight I love it so much but (laughs) the toys and stuff I was never like a Barbie doll girl I didn't care about the Barbie dolls I was like I want brat dolls and it was so funny every time I would get one like for Christmas birthdays all this stuff I was so excited and my parents would be like oh my gosh because the packaging that they put on those things was so difficult they're like oh gosh it's another Brax doll we got on package and to this day I still have them I have a really a humongous crate just filled with Brax dolls and bags and this and that and I loved it I had the video games I have the movies that was still with no shame watch now but uh, I love my Brax dolls I was always a Brax girly I didn't know I don't even really care much about Barbie. I just wanted my brat doll. <laughs> now, um, I believe this is, you have your own personal gym, uh, and you have your name actually carved in the wood. Um, did you do that, or did you do that? Um, my dad did that. So after... I, you know, graduated high school, like I either worked out in the gym at my high school or my coach's house because he had a home gym. And my dad really wanted to like make me something like at the house. And we had this three car garage that he totally flipped and made it into a home gym. And he used pallet wood. He is very skillful with wood art. And he developed a really good hobby out of it and got really skillful with it. So he created that, and it says T-Gain because initially my nickname, which I got in high school, because my real name is Taylor Gainey, so it's a, it derives off of that, T-Gain. And then when I got in wrestling, I wanted to spice it up, and I threw a Z on the end. But in the weight room, it says T-Gain on it. And we live close to Gainesville, Florida, and people are always, you know, setting – stuff out on the curb like anyone can have it you know whatever and there are people that would set out gym equipment and so a lot of the stuff that's in there is stuff that was picked up that was still in good condition or my dad was able to fix and get it in good condition and he made it the wrestling themed I've been wanting to take a whole video and like show people like the entire thing because it's amazing and He did it all himself, his imagination, his skill, talent with being able to do wood transfers. Because it's not just pictures of wrestlers. It's images that he transferred to wood. It's the autographs that I got from superstars when I was a kid going to NXT and the old match cards. Like, it's super symbolic. And I love my home gym, and I'm so thankful for my dad. Because, like I said, he's been a day one He's always supported me. He's never doubted me. He's never criticized me for this crazy dream. He hopped along for the ride, and he's been 
on board every single day and he's done any and everything he can to push help me and push me forward in wrestling. Awesome. Now um can you tell us why do you watch Netflix with the subtitles on? Listen, I do and I'm not ashamed about it. <laughs> All, I have so many friends that don't and they're like, my dad, he's like, turn those off. And I'm like, I don't know what it is about it, but if there's no subtitles on it, I'm going to struggle. Because I'm like, I need to be able to, like, I was like, listen, if you can't read fast, just say that. I was like, but I'm chewing too loud. Like, I can read fast. It's, I definitely can tell you're either, you either like the subtitles or you don't. There's no in between. It's either turn them on or turn them off. And I'm definitely a turn on the subtitles person. (laughs) Is it like, you don't want to maybe something wasn't audible enough and like your list you could just read it or like what why what what comes from how do you why do you have this love for the subtitles i don't know if it's because like i know i can read fast and maybe it's so like i don't miss anything and also like if i'm like eating something i always like throwing something on to watch when i eat and so it's like, I want to make sure that like, if I'm like too and too loud and, I, and now that I think it's just like a comfort thing, like I'm growing so used to it. So if they're not on, I'm like, and maybe it's psychological. Maybe I'm telling myself like, all right, you're lost. You're not going to be able to, <laughs> you're not going to be able to recognize what's happening because you have the subtitles on. So it's probably all in my head, but when it's up to me, I'm turning the subtitles on. All right. Now, uh, that's a great segue into the colossal question. Let's say they're making a movie about you. Every movie has a soundtrack. What would be the first three songs on your movie soundtrack? Oh, man. I absolutely love music. So, let's see. I would probably... Hmm... I know that it would probably end with My Way, Elvis Presley's cover. Absolutely love that song so much. That would definitely be like an end credit. Um, uh, There's this song called um, Celebrate um, by Dirty Heads. And it's a great song. And if you're a wrestler and you're listening... I definitely recommend, like, this song hits me in my heart because it's talking about, you know, the person singing, of course, they're on the road from, like, a music career, but it definitely translates over into wrestling. It's talking about being on the road and missing your family and stuff, and it definitely hits you in the heart as a wrestler, so I definitely recommend that to any wrestler listening. But so that one um, in between... um, Let's see. I feel like I need some Johnny Cash in there. Johnny and Elvis is my two big people. So I would probably say probably I Walk the Line. That's a really good one. Okay. We got three solid picks there, definitely. (laughs) Now that we have the soundtrack down, everybody knows you get the soundtrack down first, then you write the script, and then you go to casting. Who plays tea games, and you can't say yourself because you are legally obligated to make a Stanley S. Antonio? <laughs> oh, man. That's hard, because it's like the people I think of, the great actors, they don't really look like me. So if you're trying to get someone that did, I can't think of anyone in my head, but just people that's just phenomenal actors. Um, Jennifer Lawrence is absolutely phenomenal. She would definitely be on the list. Maybe Jenna Ortega also. Hmm. I think those are both really strong, independent women. And I've seen their acting in like, so I think about my life and the serious times and the hard times. I feel like those are two women that really execute any of those roles effectively. We don't look alike at all, but (laughs) they could like CGI or like input like monster quads and then (laughs) start 
start filming. Oh yeah. Now every movie has a supporting cast. Who would be three people significant to you and your story that would be in your movie, and who would play them? Oh man, I would definitely my dad, and I would probably have um I would probably have Dennis Quaid play dad. Okay. I would do that. Love Dennis okay. Quaid. He's an amazing father role in movies. Um, my younger cousin named Caleb, he's the one that even introduced me into wrestling. Um, for him, we could probably go with, um, we could probably go with, we could probably go with Tom Holland on him. Okay. And let's see, Dad, Caleb, we'll do my best friend, Abby, and we'll have, gosh, we need someone funny. I already got Jennifer being me. Let's see. We'll do Sandra Bullock. You can't go wrong with her. Okay. Oh, this is so we, there's, like, that's a blockbuster right there. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Took the words right out of my mouth. We got a blockbuster on our hands, and you can pre-order yeah. the tickets now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, on to a controversial subject. Pineapple on pizza. What's your stance? Oh, I'm for it. And I know I probably just lost a lot of followers, but <laughs> I do enjoy pineapple on pizza. <laughs> All right, so we and dip and ranch. Pineapple I'll add pizza. that on there also. Oh, could you repeat that? I said and dip and ranch. Like, if I have a pizza with pineapple, it's got to also have ham on it, and I will also dip it in ranch. <laughs> you know, ranch is not that um, controversial of a... Uh... Of a dipping for pizza. Um, it's just when yeah, pineapple really comes isn't. into the it's situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just lost a couple of followers on that one. <laughs> you may have gained a couple of followers as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what's your spirit, Pokemon? Oh, I, I was never really big in Pokemon. Like, I know some of them, and I would probably say Squirtle just because it's so dang cute. I have no extra recollection of, like, what each Pokemon does, like their attributes and whatnot. My only reason is just because it looks so cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, there's no shame in the OGs. We love the OGs on the show. <laughs> Now, we love the late, great Tracy Smothers on the show. Do you know the acronym for Thug? T-H-U-G. The acronym for Thug. I could spell it out for you if you need to. <laughs> I wasn't really reg registering what was being asked. Well, I could, let me spell it out for you. T is for terrible, H is for hell, U is for ugly, and G is for jail. Because a dog can't spell. Uh. <laughs> yes, we love the late, great Tracy Smothers on the show. We're trying to keep the memory alive. For some uh, reason, I was thinking, I was thinking tough or something. I was like, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> now, um, the weirdest question you'll be asked on a wrestling interview, hopefully, would you ever consider wrestling a rock? Not Dwayne Johnson, not the country, an actual physical rock. Hmm. 
You know, the first thing that pops in my head is that episode of SpongeBob with his rock in the race. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know what? I would. And I'm such a great person that I would probably, I would let the rock go over. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, just for context, there's this wrestler named Psycho Mike that wrestled a actual rock for over 15 minutes in a Tungsten Man match. That's an Iron Man match that lasts for two weeks. Mm. Yes. And he did not win the match either. Oh, oh. wow. On a more serious note, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years, I would have been in the business. I I would be at nine. I would be hit my nine year mark. I definitely hope that in the next five years that I would have some contract somewhere. Um, don't really have a specific preference. It's kind of like that happy anywhere, any opportunity that comes, I'm gonna take it. So no specific place like WWE, AW, and WA. I would definitely, at least in the next five years, be an established name, um, be a relevant person in TV, and have something going on with a bigger, with a company at that point. I would definitely love to see that in the next five years. And what is a match people should go out of their way to see that best shows off what T Games is all about? I know that I was in a triple threat match. It was me, Lexi Gomez, and Emily Locke at Freedom Force Wrestling for the Women's Championship, and that was the night that I won it. And I know a lot of people aren't really big on triple threats. they rather one-on-ones. But this one, I, I was very proud of. I was really proud of what we produced in that match, and it's one of my favorites. And another favorite I have with Lexi Gomez is at Shine. And the full match of that is available online also if you go and look it up. Um, so those, and probably, I'll give a third one. It would probably be me and Erica Demia at New South, which is also available on YouTube. You can go look up and find it. But those are three matches that I I walked away really impressed in what I what I showcase, and they're ones that I go back in my head a lot. The first match you mentioned, can we find that on YouTube as well? Um, yes, you can. I want to say that the full match is out there. There may be a highlight reel of it. Um, there's some promotions that they rather do highlight reels, other ones post the full matches. If there's, like, an influx of people that's like, hey, we want to see this match and we can't see it, I believe I do have it archived and I could release the full one. Now I feel like with the time and the promotion, I feel like I can release the full one if it can't be found. But there's definitely highlight clips of it out there. Okay. Well, I will um, go looking for those matches on YouTube and I will put a link to them uh, in the description of the video below, both on YouTube and CastBox, for anybody that hasn't seen them, wants to see them, wants to re-see them after this interview. Awesome. Absolutely. And since we are nearing the conclusion of this interview, we are wrestling with the eight questions of Dean. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> This is our speed round, our bonus round, the round where we see who you really are. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Excluding yourself, greatest wrestler of all time. Oh, uh, I'm going to try to answer these quick because I feel like it calls for quick answers. Um, a top person on my Mount Rushmore is Shawn Michaels. Worst wrestler. Uh, Goldberg. Please don't come and hate me for it. I had to say it. <laughs> Someone had to say it. Your main event in WrestleMania for the World Championship. Who is your opponent? Uh, Rhea Ripley. If you could come out to anyone's entrance music, past or present, who would it be? 
Oh, man. Ah. I, I, it's a tie between Shawn Michaels and Edge. Which Edge? Um, WWE Edge. I'm going to say 2007. Oh, Timeline. so uh, Metal Yes. Okay. Uh, finish the sentence. K Fabe is alive. We would have not all... dead in my heart. <laughs> we would have also <laughs> accepted taste great on toast. <laughs> Squash, vegetable, or fruit. Um, my instant, my instant thing is to say vegetable. Is that what you're going with? <laughs> uh, I feel like it's probably wrong, and I'm actually going to be shocked because I really don't know. But part of me was like, "Yeah, it's a vegetable. Is it a fruit?" Are you going with vegetable? If I don't. Huh? This is so bad because I live on a farm and we grow <laughs> squash. But okay, vegetable. I'll be embarrassed if it's wrong. It is indeed a fruit. <laughs> wow, I am a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it has seeds, so it's tomato logic. Um, there we go. Yes. That well, makes sense. New Japan wrestler Tai Chi. His ring girl gets smaller every year, really more himself to the world. My question, what is the appropriate trumps the butt cheek ratio for ring gear? Hmm. Hmm. I guess this is really the vibe that you're trying to go with. If you're trying to be a little cheeky, if you're trying to be a little covered up. Me personally, I I gotta keep a good ratio because I'm a squatter and I don't need no gear malfunction, especially during that time. So I keep inches. I don't know, but I keep a good safe ratio because I got I got some squatting to do, and I don't need a blowout. <laughs> All right. And the last question, the main event, the thing everybody wants to know: Have you ever had a conversation with a stranger? in a supermarket about Darby Allen. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Um, I haven't. I don't think the only people I talk about Darby Allen with is other wrestlers, and that's after we've heard how Jim Cornette feels about him on his YouTube, which if you haven't <laughs> seen that and you want to laugh, you should go listen to it. And there's the correct answer. There we go. <laughs> that will conclude this interview. Thank you so much for coming on and doing this with me. Awesome. I've had so much fun on here. This has been great. Absolutely. We like to keep it uh, interesting for our guests. Um, once again, could you tell us where we can find you on uh, social media and your merchandise? Yeah, you can find me on social media on Instagram. It is at T underscore Gaines. Facebook, you can just type in T Gaines. And my YouTube, the link to that can be found on my Facebook and on my Instagram. And for booking inquiries and stuff of like that, my email is attached. It's official T Gaines at gmail.com. And I post my merchandise on, like, my Instagram stories. I have posts on my Facebook. And you can see what items I have. And like I said, for any, any T-Gain sales, you can reach out directly to me. And, of course, if you see me at a wrestling show, come up and say hey. Join the Quad Squad and get your T-Gain merch. And you don't have to type it into your Google machine. All of the links to all her social media will be in the description of the video below or on YouTube and CastBox. Simply click the link. A new tab will appear on whatever device you are on. You have no excuse. Buy a damn short. <laughs>
of course. Thank you. I got a lot of designs. I keep it. I keep it fresh. Hell yeah. Um, of course, thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, vote on YouTube and CastBox. This was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Play All One Coffee. Join us tomorrow as we interview the Dickness Reed Matthews. And join us every Tuesday and Wednesday for new incredible interviews. Follow the show at Wrestling with E, but on X, Thread, and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing, when we're interviewing them, links to those interviews, and so much more. Follow me personally at JamesJ993. All right. Uh, when I say wrestling wit, you say entertainment, okay? Okay. For our very special guest, T. Gaines, Calico Yacht, Scooter Dust, I am James J, and this has been Wrestling Wit. Quad Stompin' Entertainment. Hey, folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.